You're watching Talking Points, a focus on the political scene in Lubbock and across the South Plains. And welcome back. Here's a look at some of the political headlines of the past week. The U.S. House now requesting information from the Texas Attorney General on that botched review of the Texas voter rolls looking for non-citizens, remember. Meanwhile, there's a bill in the legislature that would require voter registrars to investigate all voters' eligibility. Right now, that's just optional. But if passed, it would mean a lot of extra work for our election officials at the county level. Here's some actual bipartisan work out of Washington. The entire Texas congressional delegation signing a letter asking for an equal share of federal transportation funding. Apparently, this has gone on for a while. According to the Federal Highway Administration, for every dollar that Texans pay into the Highway Trust Fund, we only get back 95 cents to help pay for roads. The rest goes to other states. New York, for example, gets $1.33 back. It's believed these formulas have cost Texas taxpayers up to $940 million. Something else that's finally being addressed, well, those eight-liner game rooms in Lubbock. There's actually a bill in Austin that would ban them all together, but until that would happen, Lubbock police getting some extra help dealing with crime that takes place in some of those game rooms after a vote this week by the city council. And KMAX Page Peroso shows us what that means. Game lights and cop lights. Lubbock police say oftentimes those two go hand in hand. Now with new rules in Lubbock, police hope to crack down on illegal activity happening at game rooms. The ones that are operating legally don't have a problem, will not have a problem with us. But the ones that are operating illegally, they're going to have some issues. Game rooms are legal as long as cash isn't given out, but police still frequently call to their locations for other crimes. We have narcotics going on, we have stolen property. Uh, there, stolen vehicles, it just, it just all kinds of, of ancillary crimes that just kind of gather up at these places. Now police will take part in the permitting process, overseeing who can open a game room. So if we close a game room, if they come back and try to apply again, we can uh, look at that in the, the permitting process and likely deny the permit. The council passed the amendments unanimously. Uh, the other changes would allow police to have open access to game rooms during business hours without a warrant and no more blocked out windows. When we had that officer involved shooting, those windows were obscured and they walked up not being able to see inside that business. We tried to talk with several game rooms. Most wouldn't go on camera and the others weren't open at all. Paige Peroso, KMAC News. All right, Paige, thank you. We are proud to say hello for the first time here on the show to Lubbock City Manager Jared Atkinson. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for having me. We talked here just a moment ago about the, the ordinance changes that allow police a little more latitude when dealing with game rooms in the city. Yes. This felt like something that's been in the works for a while. Is that kind of the case? A absolutely. Um, I thought about how to characterize that. The issue with some of the game rooms. Mm -hmm. Um, is best described maybe as an ongoing and evolving uh, issue that we've had. And certainly here last year we did have the incident during the armed robbery when yeah. the police interrupted that. So the ordinance, uh, we've been working on it uh, for probably nine months or maybe just a little bit better. State law gives a little bit of guidance to that. It uh, does leave some things up to a local jurisdiction. We, uh, we were able to work with that authority. Um, several of the things in terms of permitting uh, can no longer permit and open the game room without the police background checks and approval mm -hmm. and so forth. Some things as simple as not covering the windows and keeping the outer door open. Yeah, we're police need to know what they're deal. walking into. E yeah. Exactly. Hey, that abandoned recycling facility up on the north end of town has been an issue I, for councils, it seems like forever. Uh, but now a formal request from the city and the county in the, over the past week for some state help to help clean it up there. How did that come about? It, uh, I think it's been part of the city's legislative agenda, possibly back to 2013. Yeah. Um, I worked on it during the prior session, again during this session. Um, and kind of what's going on there, uh, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality is the regulatory body. Um, they have been very good to work with us. We have met with the heads of several of their divisions. We've identified a particular funding pot um, that could be used. Mm. Our local delegation filed a, an appropriations rider for us. They did that in the House and in the Senate both. And of course, Chairman Perry's on Senate finance. Right. We, we hope that's a good thing. Lubbock County uh, is partnering with us. Uh, the city and the county passed identical resolutions. Mm -hmm. simple version of that is we are asking the state to provide the funding and then to partner with the city and or the county to expend those dollars and clean that site. Be nice. I heard a cleanup cost estimate at over $10 million at one point. 
How much do you think we can get to at least help with or get that started? We've, uh, we've asked for 11.7 million. Nice. Um, that 11.7 is actually based on a uh, exploratory bid the city took in January of 2017. Mm -hmm. The good news is when the state estimated it, it was 38 million. Oh my gosh. I think we've got it a little tighter than that. That, that always sounds good, especially if you're asking for state money. On, Absolutely. On that uh, another council resolution here recently was, and it was meant for federal years. Uh, the extension of I-27 south I mean, to the border. The Ports to Plains folks have been pushing for this for years and years now. How close are we to finally getting some movement on that? I don't know that I can tell you that exact answer. We just took the next step. Uh -huh. um, there were two elements to that resolution. We want the federal government to designate what we today call 87 as the future Interstate 27. The magic there is how the funding ultimately would flow. Um, the right of way, the way anything, any improvements would ever be built. So and, you don't and, have to redo it. And the word future is kind of important. Fu in that future deal. is very important. This resolution does not say we will start upon passage to do that. We mm -hmm. need the federal government to designate it. That resolution is also specifically urging the Texas Department of Transportation to come in with ports to planes and to support that. You know, I don't remember a council or any city leadership that hasn't talked about east side redevelopment, but there is some movement along those lines here lately, and, and there's some ex exciting stuff I know for some folks, at least potentially in the, that part of the city. Ab absolutely. Two items that we looked at Tuesday that the council considered and ultimately passed. One, the first ever east side Lubbock grant has been authorized by the city council. It's a program of Market Lubbock, mm -hmm. it's very similar to what they've done in downtown to encourage redevelopment. Specific project is for Parkway Place, um, which is a retail center on Parkway east of Broadway. This is a 10%, 10% of the total grant that there will be rebated back, and it looks like this would bring a new wireless store to East Lubbock. So I'm excited to see that moving. The good thing about that, we haven't heard of it before. It's the first one, mm -hmm. but that program now is less than three months old and it's already moving. It's already so moving. We see some positive. Second project that was approved is reallocating some unused federal dollars from years past. Several of those dollars, in fact, almost all of those dollars, will end up directly in East Lubbock and then a small portion in North Lubbock. Dirt road paving. Lubbock has a very high percentage uh, of streets, mainly in Eastern Lubbock, but not limited to Eastern Lubbock. We hear about that in the county, but it's a city-wide deal. It's in the city, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's no magic. They're, they're very old neighborhoods, mm -hmm. uh, and they were not paved to start with, but nobody ever came back and did it. Council's in year two of a program to begin addressing that. These federal dollars last night will be added to this year's program, uh, actually bringing our total up from 400000 to 600000 to pave those roads. Last question because we're a little tight on time here, but give me, give me some news on downtown redevelopment. I, and how close will the city be working here in the next few months with the McDougal Land Company, who's now the master developer on all that? And what's, uh, what's the first thing we should look for here in the next little bit? I think the next thing you're going to see that'll be uh, e easy and public and, and really gives us guidance is totally revising all the downtown strategic plans or the master plans. Yeah. Things like, what, what are our streets going to look like? How are we going to accommodate street trees? The old bricks and things uh, like what that. What do we do with those bricks? Right. Full, replace, partial? You're going to see all of that. Challenge folks, if you haven't been in downtown lately, please come down and drive around. Cotton Court Hotel is uh, starting to come up out of the ground. Buddy Holly Center looks amazing mm -hmm. with what they have going on. Citizens Tower, glass is now coming up and down. Both sides are being closed in. Things are happening. They really are. It's nice to see and nice to hear from you. Jared Atkinson, our city manager. Thank come you. back soon. You bet. Straight ahead, the president's border wall construction is moving forward. But at what cost? A look at the military projects that may have to wait because of it next on Talking Points.